Meanwhile, Ukraine's legal battle against Russia resumes today. That's over allegations of genocide used by Moscow to justify its 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Those hearings getting underway again today at the UN's highest court in The Hague. Fernand Van Tetz is there as well. She joins me from there. Fernand, this new round of hearings got underway this morning. What's come out of that so far? So Russia is trying to convince the court that it does not have jurisdiction in this case. This case brought only two days after the invasion of Ukraine, um, basically using legal acrobatics. Russia is, of course, using uh, genocide as the pretext for the invasion of Ukraine. And Ukraine has come to this court and turned that argument upside down and said, we are saying that you cannot use the convention this way. You cannot falsely accuse us of committing genocide in Ukraine, uh, and therefore you're violating that same convention. Now, uh, we've heard from Ru the Russian ambassador at large here this morning. He did the opening statement. We're hearing things that we hear a lot from Russia when it addresses international courts, um, that rhetoric about Ukraine all being war criminals, being Nazis. Uh, that is what we were hearing today. But now we're also getting to the meat of the case, the legal meat of the case. And that is basically that this convention just does not say that you can lie about another country committing genocide or accuse, uh, uh, falsely accuse another country of committing genocide. That is the main argument putting forward, being put forward by Russia here today. I must say the legal team has changed a bit over the years. They used to have a real hot shot team. Now we're hearing from a guy who just graduated with his PhD two years ago. Um, but Russia up today, Ukraine having a chance to respond tomorrow. Now, Fernand, this isn't the only case uh, where Ukraine is taking Russia to court. Tell us about the others. Yes, yeah, so at this court, which is the International Court of Justice, where states can take other states to court, there's also another lingering case that was started already over the 2014 annexation of Crimea. Uh, that is also playing out here. Uh, after hearing there uh, for that case in June, one of the Ukrainian lawyers said that they're committing lawfare rather than warfare. So they're taking Russia to battle where they can. Of course, the International Criminal Court also here in The Hague has a case against Vladimir, an arrest warrant out for Vladimir Putin for his his role in the abduction of children. There's also a court case at the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Uh, but this case is also interesting because there's this record international involvement. 33 member states have filed um, in support of Ukraine in this case against Russia. I mean, that rarely happens. The last time was in 2010 when Australia got some support from New Zealand. And the time before that was in 1951. So I think Ukraine really feels that it has backing from 20 percent of the UN member states in this case. But of course, it is up to the court case, uh, up to the judges to decide. Uh, but this is not the only place where these two will be facing off in court and it surely won't be the last.